Hey guys, just to piggyback onto the prior comments, why this week is so pivotal. Just technically, and I hate to keep using S&P 500 because I think we should start focusing more on some of the broader averages for longer and shorter term implications on the market breadth. Um, but in this scenario here, <clears throat> this is what I'm going to show you why these areas are important. The reason this candle is more important than these lower candles here on this sharp pullback when we apparently broke the head and shoulders pattern on SP500 is because this area here could have preceded a back test of the lower trend line transitionary move. So in other words, when we sold off and we had a sharp move back and we started to fight along the longer term, I guess we'd say, or intermediate term trend line for market direction, when we pulled back here and back tested again, we could have had a continuation move to the downside, which would have basically told everybody that yes, that was a break of the neckline of the head and shoulders and the momentum, which I saw a different line, obviously. Um, my transitionary line came more horizontal, but um, regardless of that, this move here would have been a downward move. So you have a sharp move, you break the trend line, you go back test the trend line, you pull back, and this continuation move um, w could have been the move that everybody was expecting, and it didn't happen. So when things that should happen don't happen, it's very bullish as far as fall through to the downside. So we see the same action up here, okay? So we go up and we start to form a wedge. These are hourly patterns. We gap up overnight session and we pull back. So this false break to the upside caused a sharp pullback on the hourly trend line. Lower touch here, lower touch here, lower touch here. Huge move. This is more important too than this trend line here because this was the upward move and the last top before the sharp move to the downside. So these are important points here, here, all along here, and then up in here. And, I, and I'll show you what I mean. This transitionary point on the purple line across here was the momentum breakout to the upside. They got rejected and then touched the rear trend, the lower trend line. We immediately went right back up and back tested that trend line late Friday on the hourly. So if we start to put bust up through there on Monday, it's very bullish. If we back test and reject that, then we know where our line is um, as far as support levels. You could even use it as a horizontal area that that 302 basically um, right in here, this little transitionary period horizontally across here. This kind of 302 area to close below would put us on guard and turn us like yellow on the market, right? But as long as we hold that 302 transitionary period, then we can start to determine which direction we're going to go between this this upward bias here on this bull flag wedge that we're, we're creating. But the pullback, the sharp energy pullback and back test of this hourly trend line, and I, I might be off a hair there, but you get the idea because as we pull back into the lower transition, I may have been off a little bit of a, a hair there too. But this, this is significantly important because we fired right back up and back tested that line. So... In all indications, you know, and if I'm going to be more definitive here, this is bullish action. Okay, the sharp moves that you have on the upper end of the channels, even like we see in the queues, these sharp moves down, are short-term traders saying, okay, I've hit my target, I'm out. And it's a transition from short-term to longer term. So you have the sharp move, right? Once, Once we, we hit the 234 channel, channel up there, huge sell-off, right? Sharp, sharp and short and sharp, but, sharp, but pretty significant, significant from 234 and change to 224. 224 on the NASDAQ, and then you fire right back up and retest it, and then you channel, right? Kind of channel along here in this little area like this. You might even, you might even say it's a horizontal channel on, but you channel and then you attack it again. So a lot of the guys that wanted to sell here and sell here are now out of the market, so you're relieving that overhead pressure of the market of sellers. Once those guys are out of the way, um, Assuming we have a continuation move, that makes the power of the move to the upside more powerful. So we've seen it before. This is a transition between shorter and intermediate and long-term players. The shorter-term guys that are happy to get what they got are out of the way. That it leaves the selling pressure. You back test it a few times, you push through, and you have a continuation move to the upside. We're kind of seeing it in stocks like Tesla, right? Risk on stocks. Uh, but we need confirmation next week. You know, it should come earlier rather than later. So you get the idea of what we're looking at um, on the market and the potential for another leg up, which would obviously be the um, final leg extension that we're seeing 
um, before we become very vulnerable for a pullback. It doesn't change the longer term energy in terms of the market. It just means that the lay on the 300 to where we get to on SPY 311, 315, on any negative news, we'll pull, we'll, should pull all the way back to the 300 level. We just don't know where that will come from and when that will come.